it's all about just speaking up and letting that passion just kind of flow through. Hey guys, it's Kirby. Welcome back to Pretty Unfiltered. First of all, I have Jen M here. She's my guest today. Hi, Jen. Hi. Welcome to Pretty Unfiltered. Guys, you might notice we have a new set it's and Jen gorgeous. is the first guest on it. So welcome to my new humble abode. Thank you. I'm happy to be breaking this space in. It's yes. so nice. I'm Very obsessed with it. I, yeah, I'm like, it's so LA. There's succulents in the back. <laughs> but today we're just talking to Jen about her upbringing, being Korean American, and mm -hmm. also talking about her new fashion line, Eggy, which means baby in Korean, mm -hmm. right? I think that's so cute. Thank you. So we're going to get to all that later, but I would love to learn a little bit more about you if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. As a Korean American, was there a time growing up that you remember looking or maybe feeling different from your white friends? Oh, absolutely. I guess from my hometown, it was mostly like a Hispanic community. Uh -huh. um, and there were like a couple of Asians here and there. And I just so desperately wanted to blend in so badly. I think being an Asian American, we do have that model minority yeah. stereotype, which is like, oh, like they're good at math and they're good at studies. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get that gene. I remember there was one teacher in my 10th grade class and whenever he would, uh, bring out the scores for the test, he would put it on a sheet <gasps> and you can see everyone's grade and he would rank them. And I remember I would always be on like the third tier. It was just so mortifying. And I think- What kind of teacher I know, does right? that? Was, I don't know. Well, was, that's why people honestly have complexes about that stuff growing yeah, up. Right? Because it's almost like pitting people against each other mm -hmm. and that's not right mm -hmm. at all. I think it was supposed to like, it was supposed to motivate us, but it totally did the opposite for me. And I think, as a student, so much of our self-worth is decided on our grades. And when your grades don't reflect that, you're just kind of like, what is my purpose and what am I actually good at? Totally, and I think something that's so interesting about school is like, you're told that you have to learn these basics, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't nail these basics, then you're just not smart. But like, you're a creative type, I'm a creative type, and I feel like we excel at those types of things yeah, too. Right? Everybody has these positive points, but sometimes they're not reflected as much in school, mm -hmm. which kind of stinks in yeah, my opinion. Right? Totally. So how did you overcome that? I think I just pretty much chugged along. I, I, <laughs> I literally just had to deal with it. Yep, um, you're like, suck it up, girl. Yeah, suck it up, girl. I got rejected from one of my dream schools, UC Berkeley. Uh -huh. So I went to community college. My grades were a lot better there awesome. uh, because I finally figured out what I wanted to dip my toes in, which was communication. Yeah. I was like, what am I good at? Like, it's not <laughs> math, it's not science, but I like hanging out with people and building a community. So I thought communication would be the best route. Um, and then I got rejected by Berkeley again. Second time, I see you. <laughs> Damn! I, I know, I know. It was, it it was like a huge blow. Thicker but skin builds thicker exactly. skin. Exactly, and I'm so happy that I went to UC Davis. I transferred and it was the perfect school for me. I absolutely loved my experience there. Even though I was lost, it really gave me time to work on stuff that I loved doing, which was, uh, <laughs> which is the YouTube <laughs> videos. Like that's where my yeah. passion really started. And I was able to express myself with fashion and style and the arts and it was just a good stepping point for me. I love that. That's a really great story because I think sometimes people, when they don't get accepted to their dream school, mm -hmm. they're kind of like, I'm a failure and I yeah. don't know where to go from here. Mm -hmm. And you kind of just took that as almost like a positive thing and figured a workaround for it. Exactly. So smart. I know. Girl, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Did you ever suffer from low self-confidence at all? Oh yeah. Really? Definitely. Yeah. I, I, I mean, just... I'm looking at her and she's like <laughs> stunning. No, so I, need I to can't show you, imagine. I need to show you my sixth grade photo. <laughs> Because I, I was overweight, I had glasses, I had the, these weird highlights, it looked awful. Everyone knows I, those highlights, girl. Yeah, Everyone right? Everyone knows them, I had them. <laughs> Is there anything growing up that you felt like made you stronger as a person in terms of like being around your family? Now that I'm an adult, I just appreciate what my family did for me so much. Like from staying together, from making dinner for me every night, just having that ritual, um, made my home just a safe space. And I love my parents so much. And I owe them everything. I know, when you're an adult, looking back, you're like, wow, they really sacrificed yeah, a lot for me. totally. But at the time, you're like, these people are crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't imagine being like 24 and going to a completely new country totally. and starting brand new, not knowing the language, not knowing what the plan B is, and just starting from the ground up. Do you speak Korean to your family? Yeah, I do. We speak Konglish. So Korean <laughs> and English. So it'd be like, 
엄마, 이거 understand him? Like, so it just oh, be... Oh, cool. Yeah, when I actually go to Korea, I'm like, whoa, I can't use any English words. So that's when it's a little bit more like fragmented. But uh-huh. me and my parents, we have a good system. Like, they know English words and I know Korean words and we just kind of blend in together. What do you think are the biggest misconceptions about the Asian American community? that maybe your fans are struggling with right now? I think maybe that Asian people are submissive. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like we're, everyone has a power within them. And I think it's all about just speaking up and letting that passion just kind of flow through. I love, Mm -hmm. that was a great answer. (laughs) In magazines or in TV, did you see a lot of women or even men that looked like you growing up? No, like especially when I was growing up, we had what, the Yellow Ranger? Yeah. Who was just kind of like (laughs) like an afterthought. Yeah, yeah. But there was, the Disney Channel, like we had Brenda Song. Yep. Yeah, she was amazing. Loki, I love love Brenda Song. Brenda, Brenda, if you ever watch this, like tweet her and then like come on the show. <laughs> no, That'd she's actually great. one of my good friends. Wait! So, I know, so it was crazy. Like watching her for the Disney Channel and then meeting her, we have the same hairstyle as Anna. So she like brought us together and meeting her in real life, I was like, oh my God. Okay, so you have been on YouTube for seven years now. Yeah. That's like OG status. I'm approaching a decade. What would you say the biggest change has been for you and your lifestyle? Just my confidence, really. I think I really struggled with just making a decision and sticking with my gut. And I think with YouTube, gradually, I just became more secure with myself. Being able to build this brand, being able to have this relationship with my subscribers has been the most amazing thing in my life. It brought a lot of the people around me together as well. It brought me and my family together so much closer. It brought me and my friends. Uh, It just changed my life, yeah. Okay, I wanna ask about Eggy. Yes? (laughs) <laughs> your Eggie, ba- your baby, baby mm-hmm. literally. So tell me all about it. Like, how long has this process been and what really inspired you? It's not a gender fluid line, but there mm. are gender fluid pieces, yeah, correct? Some. Okay, mm-hmm. that's really cool. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so we have been working on Eggy since the end of last year. So this has been a long time coming. Mm-hmm. I have worked with other brands in the past with collaborations like ColourPop yep. and, and Revolve. and that was just kind of me dipping my toes in the space. And I finally felt confident in establishing my own brand after those collaborations and everything just kind of aligned. I wanted to create pieces in my closet that everyone can wear. I feel like no one should be confined into one style. Like whether it's, you know, like I'm only boho or I'm only punk. Like. Style is so fluid, especially with the age of the internet. Totally. We have inspiration everywhere, and I feel like it's really important to showcase how we feel internally, externally. And I love getting ready every day. I love um, having the freedom to just be whatever I want to be. Yeah, express yourself through Mm -hmm. clothes. I didn't go to like pattern making school, I didn't go to design school, so it was so fun picking and choosing everything that I was inspired by and just working with like professionals to put everything that's in my head on to concrete pieces. Mm -hmm. And it was really important for me to infuse some of my Korean heritage in it. Uh, For example, a lot of the pieces have eggy in Korean on it, on Mm -hmm. the side. I also have the Korean national flower, the mugungwa, on the floral jumpsuit. And I also have the Korean melon, the chame, all over this two-piece set, and I'm obsessed with it. Is there one part of baby that is like your ultimate baby? Oh, it's hard. (laughs) I always like flicker between different pieces. I mean, I'm wearing this one. This is like my new favorite as of lately. This is the Dalva dress, but I did a DIY. I cut it into a top because I have the black version. So this is like my day top and then I've got the Dalva dress in (laughs) black. You're like, I have the black version. (laughs) She made it, (laughs) clearly. What do your fans say like you, Jen, you helped change my life? (laughs) When people say, you know what, you gave me the confidence to wear like, the sequin dress to school because I wanted to. That makes me so happy because it gives them the power to just wear whatever they want to wear because at the end of the day, they're the ones wearing the clothes and yeah. it's just a really good way to... To build their confidence, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah, I guess, you know, fashion, it, it can be a little judgmental and by Absolutely. a little, I mean a lot. One thing that I personally hate is when 
we have we see articles around um, award season and they're like the worst oh, stressed and I'm hit like, or miss. I'm like this sucks because that person obviously felt really good at mm-hmm. that moment or maybe they were insecure about what they're wearing and you're just calling it out exactly. them. And so I think we just need to be a little bit less critical of people's style choices. That's why I never do videos like who wore it better or anything yeah. because I think they both rocked it and I feel like I just want to take away that judgment in the whole fashion arena. Amen, Jen. <laughs> All right, guys, Jen, you're amazing. You're so yeah. bubbly and fun. Let me know your favorite part of this interview in the comment section. We'll see you <laughs> next time. Bye, guys. Bye.